To many, Inception is a top 10 film, and I'd be foolish to even pretend that Nolan's space story has a shot at beating it. So why even bother to have this feud today, you ask? Well, because Jonathan Paula won't shut the hell up about Interstellar. It's a masterpiece, Adam, a damn masterpiece. But thank you, as always, for that heartwarming introduction. But seriously, anyone with a shred of imagination can see that Interstellar is the Nolanest of all the Nolan films. You certainly are using your imagination if you think that, John. Sweet dreams, Inception boy. I'm gonna make this a nightmare for you. Let's fuse. Nolan's newest has five, count them, five Academy Award winners. But I'm at a disadvantage, as one of them is a total surprise I won't dare spoil. But uh, Adam, remind me again how many Oscars Leo has won? You stupid, arrogant son of a bitch. You know DiCaprio should have won five Oscars himself by now. Quite a passionate way to say the word zero there. Anyways, the top caliber cast is at their best here, exhibiting some of the strongest performances of their entire careers. Especially McConaughey and Kane, who both cry like little bitches to help us convince how emotionally important their mission is. As if the end of all mankind wasn't enough of a dramatic catalyst. Yes, your boy Matthew's in full-on McConaughey mode. He's a simple genius turned farmer who is destined for greater things. I assume Mark Wahlberg was the first choice for Mr. Nolan due to his incredible work in Transformers 4. Must have had scheduling conflicts. Sarcasm set on the table for a second, let's get back to the better film. While McConaughey's character was a loving father and dreamer of better days, my boy Cobb was a dreamer in a different sense. And because he is constantly in and out of these worlds, he's basically a shell of a man. Everyone is a shell in Inception. There's very little personality from any of them. The Lego block robot men in my film had more personality in their heads-up display than Cobb's entire team. Why was Topher Grace there? He just shows up out of nowhere, poof, like a magic f***ing genie with nothing to do. This is what you do on your show? You go after the lowest hanging fruit? He was on that 70s show for seven of its eight seasons. Show some respect. But okay, yeah, maybe he was pointless and underutilized, so was Casey Affleck. But Anne Hathaway anchors the entire narrative with a heartbreaking monologue about the transcendent power of love. Just like Huey Lewis warned us about. Don't you dare set me up and expect anything less. As I was saying, there's lots of interstellar performances here, and they all have to be to match the film's huge scope. Nothing's accidental in Inception. You'd say the characters are bland? I'd agree. And I think Nolan would too. Who's to say from the start of the picture Cobb wasn't still in a level deep? There's so much to take away from this story, and that's probably where we should head next. Well then let's go. I'm waiting like you. I don't know what's happening. I, can we... can we go? Jesus Christ, Adam, our viewers don't have time for this. Jeremy Johns knocked out four more videos in the time it's taken us to get through this. Pull that shit again and you're out on your ass, Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany? It's not Tiffany? Get out, you're fired. I'm just gonna start. Interstellar's lengthy 169 minute story follows a farmer turned astronaut who leaves his family behind in a dying earth to travel through a mysterious wormhole in an effort to save humanity because all of our crops have been wiped out from dust clouds or something. Where the convoluted narrative twists and turns from there is best experience unspoiled, but at its heart, this movie is about family and second chances. A powerful story to say the least. Let's make one thing Billy Crystal clear. I loved Interstellar. I loved it. But there is no denying, there are a lot of loose strings here, a lot of threads that weren't fully resolved, questions lingering, things were not wrapped up near as well or as intelligently as Inception. As for the little twists Nolan likes to throw at us, I expected more. I called that thing 45 minutes into the picture. That may seem late in the game for most films, but this one was 17 hours long. You're exaggerating, but I'd be okay if it was that long. Probably should have been, to fill in some of the blanks. Besides, not everyone is clairvoyant as you, little Miss Rance a lot. I, for one, appreciated the twist. Meanwhile, Inception is a perfectly paced mind trip that keeps you on your toes the entire runtime, and it's immensely rewatchable thanks to Nolan's non-linear approach. Seeing Inception again is a totally different experience, with subtle shots now rising to the surface. The final moments of Interstellar were not as resounding as I think Nolan had anticipated, but with Cobb's story, he nails it. From confronting his manifested lover to the search for his missing friend deep within the bowels of his dreams, 
A single line of dialogue awakens him from his lost years. Then the final shot of that top spinning, kind of wavering right before the screen goes black, puts the sense of fear into some of the audience members' eyes. Did Cobb ever truly wake up? This is a really shitty... <laughs> this is terrible. Yes. Well, yeah, but the question's still there. No, it's not. He woke up. But the top didn't fall, so we don't really know. He saw his dumb kids' faces. We know. Now, can I finish my thought from 35 minutes ago, or are you going to keep prattling on like an auctioneer stuck in a time loop? Say what you want to say, Sarah Bareilles. So sure, your movie has different planes of existence, but mine has different planets entirely, allowing the story to literally transcend the bounds of our own galaxy. If you thought some slow motion car crash was a mind trip, wait until Astromat takes you inside the event horizon of a quantum singularity. Let me first start by praising Interstellar and the beautiful visuals Nolan and team have crafted. From the frozen clouds to the eerily lifeless planets, it's really a work of art that should be appreciated on the big screen. Actually, that was mostly just on location shooting in Iceland, but yeah, let's go with beautiful. Wait, what movie am I defending? The stark visuals actually reminded me of a book, Out of the Silent Planet. Now with that said, I was hoping for more. Fortunately, he didn't shy away from the stunning visuals with Inception. Cityscapes fold over themselves, rooms twist and turn, traps are set, rules change on a whim, and with all these things at play comes some very interesting action. I especially love the zero-gravity rotating hallway fight sequence. That itself was worth the price of admission. But are you really suggesting Inception pushes things further? I think you'd better go initiate your kick because it seems like you're asleep in some topsy-turvy bizarro world. They can do anything they want, yet all they conjure up is some mirrors and give pretty boy Tom Hardy a grenade launcher? Meanwhile, Interstellar has a dozen separate characters, deep space travel, parallel narratives across decades of time, and an actual black hole visually represented on a 70mm IMAX screen. Nolan goes for broke here, and it totally works. Especially a nail-biting sequence where our astromen try to escape a deadly 1,000-foot wave on a massive water world. Dry land's not a myth. I've seen it. Jim Carrey, Cable Guy, quoting Kevin Costner from Waterworld, who didn't actually say that line. That was a lot to take in. That's what she said. Easy, Mariner. Let's talk music. Hans Zimmer has had his name brought up on this show more times than I can count, and he always dominates the competition. So good luck, John. You're gonna f***ing need it. Okay, I'm willing to concede this category, regardless of your dumb comments. As annoying as Inception's vroom sound effects are, Interstellar's takes a less is more approach to its score, piercing frequent pockets of absolute silence with little more than a pulsing organ. It works extremely well for the atmosphere of the picture, but it's not something I'd actually listen to independently of the film. That's where you're wrong. Inception has deep string instruments, which are both haunting and beautiful in tandem. Wrong about what? I'm giving you this round. I can afford to. I just want to enjoy this win, okay John? Let me have this. Did you know that Chris Nolan, uh, Christopher, Christopher Nolan, has something cool he does with every film, at least that I've picked up on? You mean besides just going back to Hans Zimmer every time? Right. He would have what I would consider trailers within his own films, at least from the last few that I've seen. They're basically intense eruptions of sound that last for a few minutes, usually in the form of a semi-montage where we see different sets of characters going through some serious shit. This happens a few times in Inception, and probably three or four in Interstellar. I keep thinking it's where the movie's gonna stop, but then it carries right back up after all those crazy little sections. It's quite enjoyable, and I hope he continues on with that tradition. Well, thanks for that NBC's The More You Know moment, Adam. Let's close this thing out. What we have here today, folks, are two Interstellar films. Are you serious? I used that joke five minutes ago. There is no way to prove that. And as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted... Girl interrupted. Can we just get through this? I loved Interstellar probably a lot more than I should have, but Inception is just the complete package. A stellar story, interesting cast, endless replayability, and a tight runtime make it Nolan's best film to date. You heard me, Dark Knight. Similarly, I thought these were both amazing films as well, some of Nolan's best work. But The Edge, I think, has to go to Interstellar. It has more to say about our place in the universe. It's a very important and visually beautiful film. Inception was sort of a fun action movie set in a dream world. I don't think it matches up. John, it was a pleasure to have you back on my show again. You're one of the few reviewers I respect that doesn't conform to the quick jump cuts to make a fast buck. I encourage all 10 of my subscribers to go check your channel out. Why don't you continue to tell them about it while I celebrate another feud victory? Not so fast there, Slick. I'll take my victory lap by mentioning the review show I normally host, Movie Night where I review three or more films each week in an interactive format with amusing little green screen sketches. 
But hey, if movies aren't quite your thing, and let's be honest, if you're a few nation subscriber, they probably aren't. Hey, you're right. I also do travel vlogs, gaming let's plays, rants, and a stupid show where I read some spam emails. So visit my channel and subscribe, or just troll in the comments. I get paid either way. Well, there you have it. One expert critic and Jonathan Paula give you our takes on these films. Interstellar versus Inception, where do you stand on things? Vote, make your comment heard below, and subscribe to Movie Feuds if you like talking movies. I try to put a new one out every single week. Until next time, this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Expert critic? Why do I even do this shit?